Now it's time to get to the Pick 6 Contest. $50,000 worth of cash and prizes, weekly prizes, year-end prize. Now we like to bring in one of the first ladies of football here at sportsbookreview.com to go over a Pick 6 plays, give some analysis, and just see what's up and see if she has anything going on tonight between those Philadelphia Eagles and those New York Giants. Kelsey Kramer, welcome into the show. Good to have you on on a Thursday talking a little bit of football. Hey, y'all. Missed you last week. Yeah, well, we I gave a real, I got a real nice promo going last week. I'm like, where is she? Up, oh, mm, not here today. But we do have you this week, and we're happy to have you this week. The chat box is happy. Kyle's happy. I'm happy. We're ready to get after it because I see the pick six contest up here. Now, the one thing I do want to say is I'm looking at the plays now, and there is a play tonight on the Philadelphia Eagles Giants game. I'm pretty sure you put the wrong team into this equation tonight. Is that right? <laughs> Johnny, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go against you guys, but I have to. I have to, man. I mean, y'all have a banged up offense, um, banged mm-hmm. up defense, mm-hmm. and the Giants. The Giants have kept their opponents close. Um, they're coming off of the win, and they have an underrated defense with 15 sacks that ranks right in the middle. Eagles love to see Carson Wentz go down. I'm putting the plus six on the Giants, um, but I think the Eagles can win. I just took the Giants at plus six, and I know it's down to, or it's down to what four now. It is. It's and actually and it's about four and a half, fives across the board. But yeah, you got a really good number on that. Now, me being an Eagles fan, the only thing I'm upset about tonight, Kelsey, is this fact that Eli Manning is not playing. Because if he wasn't playing, I could go out and take the wife and kid out tonight and just check the score and be like, "Yep, Eagles won again." But now that Eli's not playing, I do get a little bit of stress out of these Giants games because we always beat up little brother up there. But now you got a new sheriff in town with Daniel Jones and a new coach and a beat up Eagles team. Still think we get the win, but it was always nice just flatlining Eli Manning. So I do agree with you, though, however, on the six points, Kyle. You agree with that? Yeah, I, I, I think that's that, that's the right play. If I got a plus six, I would take the Giants because I think this is a pretty close game tonight. Uh, I think the Eagles front seven does get after Daniel Jones, and you can certainly get burned later in the game by a stupid Daniel Jones turnover because, look, you, you might miss Eli Manning, but it's probably a lot nicer seeing Daniel Jones. I mean, that guy, he could turn the ball over six times tonight. He's, he's absolutely atrocious. Should have been drafted in the seventh round, not the first round. Uh, I mean, seriously, the guy is an absolute trash can at quarterback. It's horrible. It's horrible to watch. I can't stand it. I've tried to play him in DFS. He pisses me off more than uh, most quarterbacks. And trust me, I always thought Eli Manning had a punchable face, always pouting on the sidelines. So I wasn't a big fan of Eli Manning either. But, uh, yeah, I I like the Giants here. You could see Daniel Jones ruin it with the late pick six. But I I think the plus six number is a really nice number. I'm actually jealous that you got that. Yeah, no, I, and I, I can agree with that. Let's take a look. Same, another New York team that we're going to look at on Sunday, 463, 464. The Buffalo Bills come east. Actually, they come out of New York to play in New Jersey to play the New York football Jets in this game. Heavy line in this one. Are we believing in the hype? Adam Gase and his crazy eyes and his madness going to come up with a victory after that stellar performance last week versus the Dolphins. Are we going to Jets here? Are we going to go with those Buffalo Bills circling the wagons? Okay, first of all, I would not trust the New York Jets with my money ever. Um, Mm. But I don't. I and to vent more, this Miami, this Miami team that everyone's raw rawing about on Twitter. I don't know if I follow too many Dolphins fans. It's just (laughs) annoying. Like they're not that good. Congratulations, you beat the Jets last week, who suck. Um, The Bills are balanced on both sides of the ball, and we saw an okay defense take out Joe Flacco last week, what they did to him. Um, And this week we're going to watch a really good defense up against Flacco. And then on top of that, Adam Gase's run defense ranks 21st. And that's not where you want to be when you're up against a Bills ground game and mobile quarterback. By the way, Kyle did take the Jets on the money line if you didn't listen earlier, Kelsey. So there's that. That. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> Adam Gay should be uh, hanging out there on Miami Beach, on South Beach with Dan Quinn, and they should be, you know, crying over their firings and drowning their sorrows and, you know, gin and tonics. But no, Adam Gay still sitting here coaching a football team. Makes me feel good. Maybe one day I'll get an NFL coaching job and I'll just, you know, put my blinders on and just randomly do things. 
awful coach, awful football team, so I don't mind taking the Bills. I just get scared of those double-digit spreads, especially if the Lego policeman, Sam Darnold, finds his way back into the line. He's going to find his way back, and he is going to be Legoing it up out there. We'll just see if they can equate to Hey, look, yeah. it's obviously an improvement. I mean, Sam Darnold comes in and leads him to a field goal. They're going to be like, oh, my God, this team is so good now because, you know, used to them not scoring any points whatsoever. Why don't we take it down to a little Mardi Gras action down in the Dome, and that's Carolina going to head down with Teddy Bridgewater versus the New Orleans Saints here with Drew Brees, who we thought was going to have his team ready to go full tilt, but Michael Thomas as we like to say, steady beating on teammates, twisting ankles and pulling hamstrings. Looks like he's not going to play in this game. So that line's steady at seven to seven and a half. Are we going to see a nice little bounce back effort here off a bye for New Orleans? Or are we going to be backing those Teddy Bridgewater? He's coming for revenge, Kelsey. He's coming for revenge. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Carolina, but and their young defense is really solid. The problem here is Teddy Bridgewater and Mike Davis are not Cam Newton and Christian McCaffrey. I don't think they ever will be. The Saints, even without Mike Thomas, are still a better team. We've seen that firsthand. And I just want to wish the Panthers luck. (laughs) Wow. How about that? Just wish you did. So this is a 42 to nothing beatdown? First of all, Teddy Bridgewater is better than Cam Newton uh, by a mile. Now, he had the one good year, the MVP year back in 2015. But now the best thing that uh, Cam Newton has going for him is his weird fashion choices. Maybe he'll be in, like, good housekeeping or whatever the hell it is that he's wearing on his head. Pineapples or whatever else the hell it is. Yeah, fishnets. I mean, I wish I could get away with wearing stuff like that, but I would look even more ridiculous than I already do. But uh, I think the Saints cover here. Uh, A big benefit to the Saints, though, uh, another week of rest for Janoris Jenkins and Marshawn Lattimore. So that should help them out quite a bit on the perimeter. But I still think Carolina covers. Teddy B is going to come in there and show the Saints that they're missing out uh, with uh, Scrub Muff and Drew Brees, at quarterback. All right, keep it moving here. Those hometown Atlanta Falcons who came up off the mat with an interim coach, blew out the Vikings, beat them so bad that they're waving the white flag and starting to trade people. Now they come home. Julio Jones looks like Julio Jones of five years ago. Now we're seeing him sitting out of practice again. I think I'm going to be able to play. Who are we going with here? Is this the Atlanta Falcons making a crazy run to the playoffs? Maybe not. But, hey, we can all be believers and dreamers here. Are we going with those hometown Atlanta Falcons? Are we coming to town with a little Matthew Stafford, Georgia return action here? Definitely my hometown Falcons. I have to take them. I went against them last week because I did not believe in them. But I love Raheem Morris. I love what he's doing to this team. We saw Matt Ryan and Julio Jones get their mojo back. Now Julio Jones... He's questionable for this weekend, but I think the Lions team is definitely an easier opponent than they've seen. Um, I said that before, but I just, I love Raheem Morris and Julio Jones asked Morris if he could run a play again and practice and Morris just said no and kept rolling. And I think that's what the mindset is going to be like coming into this game. It has to be perfect the first time around. Kyle, like what are you it. thinking here? Atlanta coming back? Julio? I mean, we're DFS people. That team is completely different when Julio is wrecking shop out there. Yeah, I actually like both sides of the passing game. I think Kenny Galladay absolutely torches Kendall Sheffield on the outside. One of the worst perimeter uh, defensive backs in the NFL is Kendall Sheffield. I know A.J. Terrell is coming back, and maybe he's progressing a little bit. They demoted Isaiah Oliver into the slot. So it's a trash can defense against another trash can defense in Detroit. Then you've got Stafford and Ryan, you know, the epitome of, you know, guys whose stats have kind of overinflated their careers. That's sort of what you're getting with both those guys. I like this game. I like points in this game. I am actually agreeing with Kelsey. I'm taking the Falcons. So, by the way, I will preface this. The Falcons, have I have gotten the Falcons wrong every <laughs> single bleeping week this year. No team is pissing me off more this year than the Atlanta Falcons. But I do think that they cover at home. It's, it's a short line for me, two, two and a half. Uh, good, good for Detroit that Trey Flowers is practicing, Desmond Trufant missing, whatever. He's been terrible anyways. Should be a lot of points. I'll take the Falcons at home. Interesting, because you're talking trash cans, and yes, we're going to talk about the Giants in just a few more moments here. But we got a couple <laughs> more, we got a couple more games to go over here, and we're going to talk a little bit of Sunday night football now between Seattle and Arizona. Moved into the prime time slot, Kyler Murray going up against Russell Wilson, little brother, big brother. Can they throw a punch and knock him off, or is this one of those games you're like, ah, Seattle's got this, right, Kelsey? I I think Seattle has this one, but 
Kyler Murray, I mean, he performed at an elite level last week against the Cowboys. Then again, the Cowboys are garbage, and I really just wanted to hug them after that game. <laughs> um, the Cardinals secondary is going to get exposed. Seahawks are coming off of a rest. But it's moved into prime time. I have the Seahawks at minus three. I think this is going to be a really close matchup. I would take the over. Um, the prime time thing changes it for me. But Chandler uh-huh. Jones is out with the Cardinals. I'm going to the game. So now I'm like, mm-hmm. go cards. Um, oh, I'm still, ugh, this is hard. I'm, st- I'm going with the over. I'm going with the over. I picked the Seahawks in the first place, but now I'm taking the over. Let's have a good game. 